In a speech made in KwaZulu-Natal in December, Zuma said people should guard against loving dogs more than people, saying that that was not the African way. Well, the ANC's Jackson Tembu also labeled DA parliamentary leader Lindue Mazibuko un-African when she questioned the president's recent statement that businesses which support the ANC will prosper. Now, we're speaking to ANC, uh, uh, we spe will be speaking to ANC spokesperson Keith Calder. So that's in a little while. Uh, but right now, though, let's get reaction from the DA's Lindue Mazibuko. A very good morning to you, Lindiwe. Are you an African? Hi, good morning, Ayanda. Um, in the ANC's books, anybody who criticizes who criticizes the ANC or who criticizes the national government is un-African. It's a desperate ploy to detract from the fact that the president has made a call on businesses to engage in corrupt and illegal activity. It's got nothing to do with whether or not I or anybody else is African or black or anything like that. It's a desperate attempt to detract from the real issues. Well, this has highlighted the question of, of whether or not one is African based on where they come from, uh, their culture, etc. Uh, bringing it back home, what makes someone African in your opinion? What makes somebody's Afri somebody African is whether or not they choose to self-identify that way. But I, and I need to stress that it's a mistake for anybody to get involved in this debate as though it's a legitimate one. Under the National Party, if you were questioning the apartheid government, P.W. Boto would call you a communist. Under Tabombegu, if you question the ANC, you are called a racist. Now under Jacob Zuma, you're called an African. None of these None of these arguments mean anything. They're all an attempt to shut people down, to shut people up, and to prevent people from criticizing or engaging with the failures of the government. And it's a mistake for people to start to look inward and ask themselves, am I a communist? Am I racist? Am I not an African? It's not the issue. The issue is that this is a government running scared. It's desperate, and the only means it can find of preventing people from questioning its failures is by frightening them into thinking they're not authentic South Africans. Well, taking a look at the fact that we are supposedly the rainbow nation, a country that's the poster child of, of how different uh, uh, race groups can unite and, and move forward as one, bringing it back, do you agree that there is a generation, though, of, of black South Africans who are, as the ANC would put it, uncritically assimilating to Western culture and running the risk of eroding African culture, though? Is that perhaps worth looking at? It's all absolute nonsense. This idea that Africa is one country, that African culture is a single thing, is racist. It's a kind of thing colonial, our former colonial powers used to say about Africa. It's ignorant, it's racist, it's crude, and it's got nothing to do with the essence of a person's identity as a black person, as a South African, as a Zulu sp speaker, or Kosa, or Pedi, or Tswana. All of these identities are identities that individuals are allowed to form for themselves. No political party can decide what I am, or what I should be, or how I should identify, how I should behave, what music you should listen to, what car you should drive, if you should drive a car, what pets you should or shouldn't own. These are all red herrings. It's not up to the government or Jacob Zuma or the ANC or anyone to decide whether or not somebody belongs in the African club or the black club or whatever club it is they're trying to delineate. Just like it wasn't uh, Tabombegi's intention to, to seek out racists, merely to deflect from the fact that his government was making mistakes. And just like it wasn't P.W. Butter's intention to seek out communists, it was just an effort to deflect from his government's failures. It's a real mistake to get caught up in this idea that the ANC government can criticize people on the basis of their identity. And identity is a personal thing, something an individual has. And your person can, can self-identify in what, whatever way they choose, for whatever reasons they choose to. It's not for the ANC to decide. What is for the ANC to do and to decide is whether or not it's committed to transparency and accountability and the rule of law. And if people criticize it on that basis to engage on the issues and not to deflect the arguments by, by questioning people's identities in ways that it has no right and no authority to do. Just to quickly interject there, Lindiwe. Let's be frank though, the DA is appealing for the black vote. We're seeing uh, Helen Zilla going out of her way to speak as Kosa, uh, to sing songs like Vulin Lela. Do you often feel pressured in any way to, to speak Zulu maybe at, at a conference or, or to be more quote unquote uh, in quote African? Any political party that aspires to govern at a national level must be capable of connecting with every single race group, language group, 
group of South Africans in this country. You cannot aspire to national government. You cannot be a political party that's committed to reconciliation and redress and the Constitution and all of the values that we in the DA subscribe to unless you are ready, willing, and able to engage with every single group of South Africans in their own language. And so what Helen does, what other public representatives in the DA do, speaking each other la other's languages, is a symbolic way of saying, I want to engage with you, I want to understand what issues are close to your heart, and I want to speak to you in a way that is, is appealing to you because it is your home language, in a way that connects with you. It's a way of showing people respect, interaction. It's got nothing to do with identity. It's simply a way of saying, I'm a South African too, and in order to engage with you on the issues that matter to you, I'm going to speak to you in Afrikaans on the Cape Flats. I'm going to speak to you in Iskosa, in Kukuletu. And that is something that crosses racial boundaries. It's got nothing to do with being African, being black, or being white. And likewise, any public representative or representative of the DA who speaks Isis Uto or Isis Zulu or Kosa goes on to those platforms, radio stations that are in those languages, television programs that are in those languages, and they engage in those languages in order to speak to that broad audience. It's something we all do. Now, it's not an attempt to position ourselves or make ourselves look a certain way. It's simply an attempt to engage with a broad cross-section of South Africans. And that stuff has to do with the need for us to come together as a political party and show that we are committed to all South Africans. Uh, it's got nothing to do with whether or not we're trying to be more black, more African. Anyone's identity at an individual basis is up to them. It's their choice. It's their decision. Helen Zilla doesn't speak at Kosa in a, as an attempt to try and make herself Kosa. She does it in order to engage with voters in a language that is, is, you know, that speaks to them in, in their hearts. She engages with Afrikaans speakers, even though she's not Afrikaans, uh, in, in Afrikaans, in their language, in a, in, a, in a manner that speaks to their hearts. That's the essence of politics in a plural society where everybody speaks different languages, comes from different cultures. Lindy, I'm going to have to interrupt you. Idea I'm going to have to interrupt you there very quickly. Cultures. Facebook followers and uh, Twitter followers, Facebook friends would never forgive me if I didn't ask this question. Do you, in fact, know how to speak Isizulu? Of course I know how to speak Isuzulu. This question is always interesting to me because I am on ETV News and of course you're speaking to me in English and so I'm going to speak back to you in English. Sometimes people call me on radio stations that are English speaking and they say to me, do you speak Isuzulu? And I say, the reason you've never heard me speak Isuzulu is because you don't listen to Isuzulu radio stations. Tune in to Ukozi and into Gakazi and Ikwekwezi and you'll hear me speaking Isuzulu. Perhaps the problem is that many of our people are concerned about what languages I speak in. They're not concerning them themselves enough with what languages they listen to in media and on radio. There's no question that I speak Isuzulu. I speak it at rallies. I speak it on appropriate platforms where I'm asked to speak the language. When I'm here, I speak English. If I'm asked to speak Afrikaans, sometimes I'll give it a try. We all do what we can in order to make sure that the message of our party is communicated in as many languages as possible. We'll have to leave it there, Lindiwe. Thank you so much for your time. DA Parliamentary Leader Lindiwe Mazboko joining us for our discussion about what is and isn't African, saying she won't stoop to that level to have to classify herself. We'll be speaking to ANC spokesperson Keith Koza a little later this morning. Now, Gareth Edwards has a few comments on the back of that interview. Over to you, Gareth. All right, so I ran over to the big screen very quickly. That's what Lindiwe Mazboko has to say about it. This is what you had to say about this particular discussion coming through. Uh, to us, Ishmael, birthright, what makes you African? Birthright, he says, home is where the heart is, commitment is growing, Africa and adding long-term value to people, the economy and political environment, according to Ishmael. We have one more comment, I'll go through it quickly. In Kateko, uh, being an African should not just be identified by skin pigments, but adhering to our cultures.